This podcast is the result of my passion for languages and for talking to people. I have conversations with language professionals who are willing to share their experience. We focus on their work, but also on how their love for languages has shaped their personal lives. I started my career as a researcher in terminology, but I found my passion for working directly with clients when I lived in the United States and started working as a language consultant for global companies like Sony, Apple, and Google. When I came back to Europe, I was introduced to the world of LSPs, where I had multiple roles, project manager, vendor manager, and terminologist. Now that I am fully dedicated to my own projects, I provide language services in English and Portuguese, mentoring and consulting for the localization industry, and of course, I'm also a podcaster. Find out more on LinkedIn or Instagram and get in touch if you'd like to explore how I can help you with your projects. I am Rita Prazeres Gonçalves, the language worker. Hi, everybody. So this this time is a second take because I <laughs> started wrongly, right? Calling Martina Marina. So I was like, no, let me stop here. Let me start again. But now I'm telling you that I'm doing this. So I guess... <laughs> That's how it goes. So it's really great to have Martina here because from what I know, Martina is a digital nomad. She has two well-known companies. She's very active on LinkedIn. So I thought it was going to be a very, very interesting uh, person to bring to the podcast and to have a super relaxed and personal chat about work, right? <laughs> so that's what we do. So if you could just say a few words about yourself, like somewhat of an introduction, Sure. Well, first of all, thank you so much for, you know, having me on the podcast. Always, you know, nice to have a chat, relaxed chat about work. Um, to me, especially like work, because I combine my passion with work, and we'll talk about that in a minute, I guess. This is all about what it like. It's all uh, about having a, you know, a good time when you're working as well. So, yeah, I'm super happy to be here. I am, as you may tell from my accent, I'm Italian, <laughs> but... I have been living everywhere basically uh, for the past since I was 19. I am now 34, so you can you know you can do the math. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been living um, even before I graduated, and I started my business basically on the road. <clears throat> and I am currently in Greece, um, mm -hmm. but I will be moving to Austria in a month for the snowboarding season, like half the season. Mm -hmm. um, and as you were mentioning, I do run two agencies. Although right now my main, you might have. Maybe come across me and know me first from my agency called Moving Words, which is where we do localization for SaaS companies. <clears throat> However, my main focus for at least the past year, 100%, has been the company that's called the translation agency called The Action Sports Translator, which mm -hmm. <laughs> obviously where we do translation for outdoor sports uh, and action sports. Yes. Well, we'll talk about all that <laughs> because it's amazing. Uh, but let's start with the Martina as a child thing, because I'm like, <laughs> I'm wondering, was she already very active? Were you already into, you know, radical sports? Uh, what was the story? Were you very adventurous or that came much later in life? So I'm very, I was very lucky that I grew up, I, I was born and grew up in Milan and my parents took me skiing when I was three years old. So I believe I started skiing before I could walk almost. So, you know, that was uh, multiple weeks and uh, in winter throughout the year from, you know, whenever the first snow fell at the time, probably was like at some point in November, all the way mm -hmm. until the very last end of the season, like I would spend half of the year like going up and down from the mountains. So that was just kind of my upbringing. And that love was so big. Uh, I also did spend all of my summers in the mountains and my love was so big for the mountains. It's actually, that's where I felt home the most. And actually when I was I think 18 and you know I had my car or 19 and I got my car my license I actually that's something that I wouldn't do now these days you know now be more aware of the environment and pollution but at the time mm -hmm. I didn't because <laughs> it's so long ago now um so I was just always like I had a as I was um studying and going to university in high school and everything I was going to uh, I had like a weird uh, shift in my job and every Sunday, I think, I finished work. I was working as a waitress at a bar, at a coffee um, coffee shop. So at night at 1 a.m., I would basically I would walk into work with my skis uh, or my snowboard, depending on what I was doing at the time. And I would, you know, do my work shift and then at 1 a.m., just get in my car, drive all the way to the mountains, get there at 3 a.m., and then, you know, sleep five hours and then spend the next one and a half days, one and a half days that I had off and then just 
ski like non-stop not even for lunch and then just like go back and that was you know went on as long as i was even in italy so that's kind of <laughs> that wow. was like my first where, where the action comes from right <laughs> yeah i mean i was a bit, i guess crazy but i loved it and then when i was actually when i was 16 i switched to snowboarding from skiing so i've done half of my life skiing and half of my life snowboarding and for the past maybe 13 years i haven't gone back to skiing so that's kind of been my that's my main sport Mm -hmm. um but also you know i used to do um i guess you call it like practice athletics like run track you know long jump that was i was mm. always into sports a lot like for 15 years and swimming there was like a lot of sports <laughs> hiking um yeah, that was kind of my my life okay so when you went to university it didn't occur to you or did it to actually go into some sort of job that had to do more with you know physical education things like that since you were you had such a relationship with the subject or did you study languages what happened there yeah i mean absolutely not it didn't occur to me because i was never a very good disciplined child let's put it that way <laughs> so actually i the one thing that i was really good at uh when i was already like in middle school and you know as a child i was very good with italian i had a very good like vocabulary i was very good at grammar mm. and so when i finished my high school i actually uh, learned english um when i was 12 years old maybe as my class was the only one where we did french for some reason mm. it's child children and then we moved on to um i learned english and then I was like, oh, wow, I like this. I'm quite good at this. But then I thought, okay, I'm actually really good at Latin and Italian. So I'm going to do classical studies. And I went oh. on to do you know, like ancient Greek and all that. And then <clears throat> I did the first year of that. And I was a very rebellious child. <laughs> and I didn't like it. I was like, wow, this is too much. You know, anyone who's done classical studies can probably understand what I'm talking yes, about. Yes, 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 for sure. <laughs> it was just like, did you do classical studies? Well, there was a part of it in my life for sure. Yeah. Okay. So this was like really hardcore and yeah. really required like, wow, it was crazy. And I was like, okay, I'm not, you know, disciplined. I don't like authority. I don't like people telling me that I've got like to do all this stuff and I have got to study so much stuff that I don't really care about. And so that became something that I didn't like. And I actually sort of decided to fail my first year at high school. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to now move on to a high school where we study modern languages. Mm. And that's where I found my passion where I didn't have to study <laughs> somehow I was good at it. Mm. So then, you know, that became my, like my, my thing where, okay, I, I knew that I wanted to do something with languages, but then because I was very rebellious, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to, I didn't like to have to study. Like I didn't, ha I didn't like having to study. I liked, I liked learning, but not having to study, which is mm. in my brain was too very. Yes. I, I, I totally get it. Trust me. I totally get it. <laughs> Um, and I guess, you know, it came from the fact that I had a bit of a difficult relationship at home, like with my, um, one of my parents. And so I think that's where the rebellious thing came from. <clears throat> and so as soon as I was 19, I was like, I'm out of here. I didn't want to go and study anymore. I do any more like universities or anything like that. And I moved to Germany straight away. Um, thinking, cause I spoke, you know, German, I could get like a good job. You know, I was like, I don't know, 19 years old. What sort of good job am I going to get? <laughs> <laughs> I ended up working at restaurants and all sorts. And it was a nightmare because I'm not very good at that. <laughs> I'm good at talking to people, but I'm not very There's good like at schedules and things like that. So <laughs> yeah, first I had no social life. You know, you're working mm -hmm. like, I don't know how many hours a day. And then it's just, it was just not very, it's not my calling. I'm not a good waitress. <laughs> Um, but I hear know, it you. A, it was an easy thing to do at the time. <clears throat> um, and then I think I went back for some reason to Italy. And then my grandma, she told me that there was this university right behind her play, like behind where she lived, uh, which did something with translation and interpreting. And I was like, oh, that seems cool. Was this and in at Milan? The time, yeah, Milan. So um, it's actually a quite famous university in Milan. Um, and then I was like, oh, this is actually quite interesting. And on the same day, I got a job at the national airline in Italy. So I was like, okay, well, I'm, you know, I'm going to stay now back in Italy. I think it was like a year or a year and a half after I had left. So I'm going to stay here. I'm going <clears> to <throat> start this job. And then I'm going to start it at this university. I'm going to take on translation and interpreting and communication. So there was translation, interpreting and marketing, basically, mm -hmm. as the three topics, uh, like main, um, yeah, main topics mm -hmm. uh, and so that's what I did um, but at the time it was a private university and I had to pay for it myself so with the job that I had it was not enough to pay for that 
you know, Italy is very like a low paying country. So I ended up having like three jobs and, you know, just sleeping two hours, leaving Red Bulls, not recommended. <laughs> if you're listening to this, you're starting out, don't do this. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah. And, and then I just like did university. And then because of that, so my story is a little bit probably different to many people <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because then uh, my university <clears throat> uh, bachelor's degree was supposed to take three years, I think, <clears throat> but I was <clears throat> one and a half years into it and I couldn't make enough money to pay for it with right. two jobs or three jobs. Yeah. Um, and actually, even before I graduated, I got a first translation client as, uh, at the airport that was like, I was, you know, checking in this passenger and, you know, speaking German and this guy, oh, you know, we live having a chat. And then this guy said, oh, you know, we're always looking for translators. So I got my first like, freelance client even before graduating. It. Yeah. And then I decided, okay, I either, I remember being like 21 years old and waking up and being like, wow, I am so stressed because I don't have enough money to pay for my university, my rent uh, and all of this and, you know, the petrol for my car, like, cause I have to go up, up and down and there is no way to use public transport and so I made a decision and even though I was not supposed to do it um, based on the rules of the university I went up to the principal and I said look I either stay in Italy and I cannot pay for this university and I have to give it up mm-hmm. or because I'm already working through jobs like how many more jobs can I work <laughs> um, or I just do it from the distance and I move to a better paying country and then I come back and I do the, you know, I do my tests. Mm-hmm. And she was like, you know, if that's the only way you do it. And so that's what I did. And I moved first to Germany and then to Switzerland. Uh, and I was working at different cafes again and like, you know, pubs. It was a very depressing time. <laughs> and then I went back and I did all my tests and I passed. It was really difficult. <laughs> but it took, me a bit long. it took me like four years, I think, uh, to get it done instead of the three years. Or mm-hmm. maybe five instead. Of, I can't remember now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that was wow. kind of it. That's you know how I. And did then it. you were like, "Okay, now I have this degree." And what happened? But the funny thing is, wait, because before I got my degree, actually, it took <laughs> me five years instead of four, instead of three, because the actual studying and doing all of the tests took me four years. <clears throat> but then the very last uh, test that I was supposed to take before then graduate, like preparing for the graduation, and defending my thesis, was. Um, I didn't pass it. I he did study for it. I remember, and I didn't pass it. And and then I was like, okay, well, now I have to pay for another year of my university tuition. What am I gonna do? I'm just gonna go off. And I went um, uh, and I moved to Southeast Asia <laughs> with no money. I just moved to Southeast Asia because I thought, you know, let's just make this time worthwhile. Because otherwise, I'm just gonna be wasting away like in Milan. Just I hate this city. I don't like to be here. So I did that at the time I had this crazy boyfriend. Um, so I went there and instead of traveling, obviously I was trying to start the business because how am I going to sustain myself here now? Uh, and I'm not, you know, I'm not working anymore here in, in Italy. So I was like sitting all day, just, you know, I had very little understanding of how business works. So I had to learn copywriting, marketing, mm-hmm. how to create your own business, like your own mm-hmm. website. And so <clears throat> I spent months and months and months constantly fine tuning, recreating this website. And then one day I remember I was sitting at this hostel. It was like in Cambodia. And I received this email from this translation agency uh, saying like, yeah, we would love to work with you. And at the time, I think it was for like a te- telecom. It was like my very first specialization. It was like more like IT software. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I actually sort of specialized in Swiss Italian because I was living in Switzerland mm-hmm. and I'm from Milan. So it's, it's kind of similar already. Uh, but because I was living in Switzerland, people were finding me and they, they wanted to work with me. And so that was my first specialization, like Swiss Italian for IT and software. And mm-hmm. that was what it was for a long time. Kind of, that was the so main as, thing. As a freelancer or as already a company? What was no, your no, first? No, 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 as a freelancer yeah this must have been back in 2014 mm-hmm. i believe uh, which is when i started to you know work properly as a freelance translator with a vat and uh, registered business and <clears throat> i was already doing a little bit of work you know before that but this was like a proper okay wow now i'm working for an agency mm-hmm. yeah so that's now 10 years ago crazy <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, and then it kind of like went on there and I really hustled hard to get more and more clients really always getting better and what I'm doing. And I kind of 
because in my degree I had communication and marketing, I naturally fell into marketing translations. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and let's be honest, a lot of people when they start out and maybe, maybe even experienced translators, I would say that they do marketing translation. But it's actually really hard, you know, when you start yes, out, <laughs> you are probably very, like, not you, but like anyone who's starting yeah. out, it's probably very bad at the beginning. Like mm -hmm. you don't know what marketing translation actually entails. <laughs> you don't get it, right? It takes a long time to get good at it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, yeah. And then I kind of went on and as a freelancer, I was always doing a lot of translations for marketing purposes. And that included a lot of different things like coffee machines, sofas, beds, like all sorts of stuff. But my main focus was the Swiss market. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Until I had to go back to Italy because of a tragedy that we had in my family. And I kind of mm -hmm. was stuck in Italy for a bit. Um, and I didn't work. It put me out of work for like six, seven months because I was just like mentally wow. not ready. I course. couldn't work anymore. <clears throat> and then the very first job request that I got after I was ready to work again mm -hmm. was <clears throat> sorry someone that I had met back in Zurich like all those year early, years earlier uh -huh. who wanted us to who wanted me to help them with translations into multiple languages and oh. for a client who is in actually the action sports industry but at wow. the time <laughs> We still work with this client today and it's like, you know, been now, I think, eight years. But wow. at the time, I didn't think, oh, maybe I'm going to specialize in that industry. It's natural I, that you don't think that, right? <laughs> it is very particular. It's very specific. Yeah. <clears throat> I thought, you know what? I'm actually, I really like SaaS, like software as a service. I think it's a really good in industry. I like it. So I'm going to set up, I'm going to pivot now and I'm going to, like, first, you know, we were doing a little bit of translations. It was just me managing a team of a bunch of, you know, three, four, five people. Mm -hmm. um, whatever clients needed some translation into multiple languages, I was, you know, managing that, you know, very amateurial, like very rudimental mm -hmm. sort of like setup. So you were like a freelance project manager, right, at that time? I mean, kind of. Uh, we can put it that <laughs> way, I guess. Yeah, I was just like a freelancer working with a team of additional people, like mm -hmm. doing that. Oh, so you were also doing the linguistic work? Yeah, I was also like, and you were managing mm -hmm. myself. I was checking actually what people were doing because I can be quite uh, <laughs> annoying. Like, I'm gonna be like, you know, I'm always checking. Um, so I was doing that like very sort of chilled, easy sort of setup, <clears throat> and it was okay for what it was. And then it sort of kind of grew a little bit. And then I thought, wait a second, marketing <laughs> translation is actually not a specialization; is a broad, is a broad thing it's a service mm -hmm. and if i am now providing marketing translation services even with a team to all these different types of businesses i am casting a very wide net and it's very difficult to create you know a good i don't know brand or present for that and at the time i already had quite a lot of presence online you know i've always been very <laughs> people like everywhere um and so that's when i decided to pivot the entire branding into and that was 20, 2018 no 2000 and, yeah, I think it was like 2016 when I started the agency, Moving Words, and Moving then words. over the next over the next of the cup next couple of years, I slowly pivoted it into like SaaS localization, um, and then like you know did the whole rebranding the website and 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 all of that, and then we started getting like some immediately <laughs> some really like focused clients for that mm -hmm. industry, and at the same time, in 2018. So exactly five years and one month ago, because it was December. Um, then, you know, five years ago, six years ago, I also got into climbing very heavily. And, and right now, yes. it's like... <laughs> That's what I, what I, I, I've seen lots of photos of you climbing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I really started, like, getting really, like, a lot into climbing. My partner, like, is super, you know, really good climber. So I really started traveling literally, like, the world just to climb. So I kind mm -hmm. of became... So that's know. when you started being, like, a digital nomad, right? So it was, like, contemporary to creating the company and then moving all the time? Or what was the story there? Not what was really. it happening? No. <laughs> so that was kind of from the very beginning because when I got my very first freelance client, um when i when i already was 19 i was already doing that online so mm -hmm. that was already the sort of like building in the background and then i believe this must have been 2015 before graduating i moved to a small town on garda lake um and that's when i stopped doing any like i like before i was still working to you know 
like moving places to work locally. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but in 2015, I moved to this place because my then boyfriend was into kite surfing. And I think he got at the time like a job. You only like, want radical people. <laughs> <you>. <laughs> people who are into sports. Exactly. <laughs> Action sports. So, I think at the time, if I'm not mistaken, he had gotten a job as a kitesurf instructor. Mm. And so I moved there just, you know, to hang out there because um, I just didn't want to be in Milan. I didn't like it. I just moved. Um, and uh, no, this must have been, sorry, it must have been way earlier than 2015. I'm mistaken here because 2015 is when we had a, uh, my dad basically got involved in an accident and that's why I had oh. to go back to Italy. Mm -hmm. So I think this must have been around 2013 then. It must have been at least a couple of years before when I moved to this town and I just completely stopped doing any other work and I um, was then. It must be like those, between those two years where I stopped doing any other work and I just focused on the translation side. Mm -hmm. And and I believe it was after... It was either after or before the, the, the whole Southeast Asia. It's so long ago now and I've been in so many places. <laughs> I, I can only imagine. <laughs> but yeah, it was like around that time, right? Um, so yeah, I did that. And uh, and then it just like grew from there. And, uh, you know, it was, I think it was actually before Southeast Asia, I believe. So I think it was before Southeast Asia and South America. It was the two main things there before I was in this Italian town. And then I moved away and I went there. So that was kind of when it, when it started. Um, but then, because then when I also, when I moved back to Italy because of, you know, my dad's accident, mm -hmm. I got stuck in Italy for three years and I was going crazy after three months in Milan, I was like literally losing my mind. And so I thought, okay, I can't do this. I need to, you know, obviously be near my family. Uh, and so I decided to move to the Alps where mm -hmm. I grew up. <laughs> so that was the, and so that also like I was running a business from there and that was way early, like way before running the company or starting the company. Mm -hmm at least one or two years before starting the company. Um, and then what did I do? Um, oh yeah, so in 2018, I, so what happened was that I was really into climbing at the time. I just really got into it. So I was addicted to climbing. Anyone <laughs> listening to this who's into climbing understands what I'm talking about. Uh, really good. Which I don't, obviously. I believe you, but I don't understand. I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> <laughs> I was super hooked. <clears throat> um, and so I think at the time I went on to buy a pair of climbing shoes online and I was like floored and shocked but the really sh like crappy <laughs> quality part of my French of translations and multi yeah. like obviously translated content you could tell or like even multilingual content the quality was so bad uh, mm -hmm. on a lot of the companies that I checked and I was like wow there is something maybe that needs to be done here um, and then I looked around and I couldn't really find any maybe specialized translation provider. There was a couple of maybe smaller teams that were mm -hmm. offering the service, like maybe I was doing with like moving words previously, mm -hmm. but no real proper like translation service agency, like really catering to the industry. Yeah, I never heard about it. Yeah. And I've been here for a while. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then after a couple of weeks, I think um, that I had to, I had to get more removed under my foot. And so I was stuck at home in crutches and I was getting so bored. I couldn't go skiing. I couldn't go climbing. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to put this time that I'm stuck at home on crutches to good use. And I'm going to set up a business which is going to cater to the outdoor industry. And so I spent one week just working 24 <laughs> seven to come up with the branding name, which at the time I didn't think about it. I was like, I'm just going to quickly come up, call it the action Port translator. It's a bit long. I will think about something better later. I'm just going to come up with something like a, a, a minimum viable product, just uh -huh. something that works. Created a website uh, by myself, then hired a copywriter for, I think, 500 euros um, and got him to like, it was a one page or super simple website and to create the copy for that or fix what I had created. Um, and then I decided that after my mole uh, surgery, removal mm -hmm. surgery was healed, the next week, I would fly to Germany and go to a trade show for the outdoor industry. And I would go there with this website and see if there was, you know, a market for that. Wow. <laughs> so that's how it happened. <laughs> wow. And yeah. it was there, right? The market. <laughs> it's been crazy because for the first, so when I first flew there, you know, I didn't really think this through. I didn't have a big team. I just knew a few people. So I put them together um, and I flew there I met one of the translators there actually and then we got our very first client from there I didn't even have that much of a game plan I just thought I'm gonna put a team of people together like I did previously 
and we're going to go and like offer the best translation service for the other industry that the industry has ever seen. <laughs> so <clears throat> we got a first client there, you know, at the time it was still a little bit like not a very structured approach. Right. Um, and then for the first year, I didn't really have time to work a lot on this company because I was working on my, all of my other stuff. Mm. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a bit of a <clears throat> cough. And yeah, and then within the first you know, year, I would say the first year was quite quiet. And then within the, so that was end of 2018. So first year was 2019. At the end of 2019, I didn't do anything during this year. The only thing that I did was reach out to a couple of companies or like smaller brands to say, hey, you know, I'm building this. Can I do some translations work for you for free? And in turn, you let me use it as part of my portfolio and uh -huh. the logo. Right. You know, that was a win-win situation for everyone. Mm -hmm. I gave them very clear terms and they were like, yeah, sure. Fun fact, two of these brands, uh, the two ones that I reached out to, one of them I'm still very good friends with. <laughs> and this this is now five years ago and the other one is not a paying customer. <laughs> so, I believe you, yeah. I believe you. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> the, 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 off, pay, pay off. So within the, the first like 12 months, we were found on Google by the likes of Salomon and, you know, O'Neill, like really big companies. Mm -hmm. And suddenly we went from having like zero or like, you know, very, very little work that because we didn't put any or I didn't put any effort or marketing into this to having this massive major project, <laughs> like hundreds of thousands of words in like five languages. And I was like, whoa, OK. Um, so I got very busy very quickly. And mm -hmm. the past, but that's years, when you I'm didn't do any language work, I suppose, because you had to manage all of this stuff. <clears throat> I think I was still doing some of the Italian. I mm -hmm. have always been very like particular <laughs> with the quality that we put out. So I think at the time I was still working on the Italian whenever it was included um, in the project. But then, you know, then the next year, I think is when we got then like a really big project. Like this was already big accounts, but then we got a third client that was like really really big and they had a, some very like I mean, i'm actually quite surprised that i managed to sell because <laughs> <to> sell, <laughs> at the time i didn't have that much experience you know selling to these companies and we're going we're talking like really big deals as well mm -hmm. so somehow i managed <laughs> to <Yeah>. sell it <clears throat> and then very quickly i had to hire the, our first project manager um who fun fact <laughs> at the time i was climbing in this um hot spot climbing hotspot in Spain and I was living in the van full time with my partner and our mm -hmm. pets. Um, and it was like, um, there is a place like an area where all the vans climb of climbers were all like sort of parked together and then you mm -hmm. know, our bags and just walk. Uh, and it sort of like creates a community there. And one day I was sitting outside, just like typing away furiously on my laptop <laughs> <laughs> and I had, I used to also have a business called translate uh, freelancer at work. Um, maybe people listen it's to the, the stickers, podcast. right? Exactly. Yeah. So I was making stickers that, you know, for translators and freelancers, which I now don't have anymore. Just too many things <laughs> to take care of. Um, and I had one outside of like on my laptop and I was like da, 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 working and this, this couple walking outside of their van saw me and they were like, oh, you're a translator. I am also. So the guy said, oh, I'm also a translator, a Brazilian Portuguese uh, translator. And she is like, oh, I'm also a translator. Uh, and then it turns out that she actually used to be uh, translation, senior translation and project manager at Transperfect. <laughs> uh, but then she didn't quit the job. She worked there for like five years. And now she was working, you know, like me as a freelancer translations. And I was like, look, you know, I've got this major account just and landed in my lap. One of the languages was Brazilian Portuguese that we had to translate into. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't possibly handle these two massive accounts plus the third one by myself. Um, and she was like, yeah, let's talk. And she's actually, I was so, I can't believe how lucky I was because she's amazing. Uh -huh. You know, we've, we've been working there for like three years. Um, and you know, she's, she's absolutely incredible. And one of like the best professionals that I've ever like met in my life. Mm -hmm. And he's been Brazilian for his translator for this account now for like three years. Wow. So, yeah. And that sort of like kicked, kicked started the whole thing. <clears throat> and from there, it hasn't really been like. He hasn't stopped. It's just every year we just almost double, you know, our project project size, project income. Uh, the team is getting bigger, so it's and now we have like a really big structure, like super structured, like structured approach as well. Mm. You know, we're getting projects 
we're getting clients like clients are coming to us and we are winning requests for proposals from big agencies like Transperfect and not from but like against like mm -hmm. we are awarded the, the project instead of them like this is crazy <laughs> so, you know i used to be exploited by them <laughs> so well you, you know, know I, I mean? I, i've worked there so <laughs> yeah. yeah there you go you know you know what it's like right? i was a project manager for two years for transperfect yeah okay there you go so you know what i'm talking about i know everything so, you're talking about <laughs> yeah so you know also when i'm when i say that you know my my project manager used to work for five years like i can't believe how lucky i was that she was my project yes. my, my because if you if you have been a, a project <laughs> manager for transperfect it's like you've been a project manager for a hundred years because <laughs> the exactly. time multiplies many times <laughs> exactly and then my second project manager uh, i also hired her i think the summer of the same 2020 so it was kind of like you know every six months we like got a new project manager at the beginning mm -hmm. and um but she was actually supposed to work on moving words um uh, because we also did have clients working in that mm -hmm. uh, and then <clears throat> the just kept growing and then she sort of like started dividing her time between them two until it got to the point that we needed one more person to come in uh plus a vendor manager Mm -hmm. And then I think the following year we decided with the previous, the second project manager that she wasn't really into action sports. It didn't make sense. Right. right. So it was kind of, um, you know, not going to work in the long run. Like, cause if you're not in that culture, it's, it's, it's a bit difficult to fit in. <clears throat> and yeah. And so I started like myself dividing my time equally between moving words and the action sports translator. And then over time, I just felt like I started losing my soul. <laughs> And my voice. Mm -hmm. And then we got like, you know, these really big accounts and big projects for moving words as well. And I just started to like dread them. I didn't enjoy them anymore. Mm -hmm. And then what happened last year with these big tech layoffs um, and people getting fired in, in, in the SaaS industry. A lot of our contacts got fired. And then I was just a bit disgusted by the whole industry. And I decided, you know what, I'm just going to take a step back of, from this industry. I, ha I still have some we still have some clients, but I'm not going to put any effort into mm. this anymore. If we do get leads, I'm going to, you know, pass them over to a trusted competitor, mm. <laughs> so to speak. Someone that I know that is going to do a good job or maybe we're going to white label. I don't know. And I'm going to put 110% of my time into the Action Sports Translator instead. Mm. And last year was crazy. This year, I started by how many days? 12 days. I am already, like, scared. It's just, it's blowing up. And now we have, mm -hmm. I think, five project managers hiring three more, you know, maybe, like, an additional vendor manager for Asian languages. And, you know, we have a content manager for, like, copywriting and content writing projects. It's just crazy. Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. I see. <laughs> I'm, I'm very... It's very hectic. <laughs> mm -hmm. But at the same time that all of this is happening, other things are happening, right? Because you are always moving, right? So how do you decide where you're going to go next? And how does that come about knowing that you have to focus so much on your projects? Yes. Yeah, so for the past two years, I would say that my free time has gone to zero. <laughs> but what I try to do, I try to incorporate that with my schedule so sometimes if i know that i can you know i don't have to do maybe super intensive work and maybe i just need to reply to emails and stuff i will take my laptop to the crack climbing and maybe i will belay my because when you climb you have to be two people and i have to basically you know manage the rope for my partner who's climbing mm -hmm. he's basically right. you cannot climb unless i'm there so mm. I will belay him. That's how we say it in, in technical jargon. I will belay him with the rope. And then once he comes down, I would like, oh, get on my laptop, do the meeting, send my emails. And then maybe I'll try to find a time to squeeze in one climb. So it's not ideal, to be fair. Um, but uh, I probably put on like 10 kilos in the past tw two years just because of, you know, very little time, a lot of stress. It's oh, because you on... always keep the rope instead of climbing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, just exactly. I mean... <laughs> To be honest, managing an agency is not for the faint of heart. Yes. Uh, faint of heart. It's very, 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 very hard work, and it's very stressful. So many decisions. I like a lot of the time I turn to stress eating, and because I'm not moving as much anymore, I'm just like, yeah. <clears throat> you know, a bit of a. But it's okay. I mean, you know, it's part of the game, and it's just about getting to the point where 
you can scale it and not be so involved in it anymore. And mm -hmm. that's what I'm trying to do. I, I like to be involved in it, but not to the point where it's making me, you know, sick <laughs> potentially. So, um, and then also I try to, you know, in the weekends as well, try to put in as much as I can and maybe in the evening or I'm, I try to make it work. And the good thing is that because I work in the other industry, clients don't give a crap if I show up and I'm taking my meetings from my van. This is, I'm recording this from my van, by the way. <laughs> like I'm doing this with you from my van. Or I am, you know, I just came back from a climb and I've got chalk all over my face. Everything this is in context, right? So they're, I suppose they're happy to see you. They actually have what to, you preach, yeah. right? Exactly. <laughs> they're like, oh, wow, she's actually one of us. So, okay, that actually works. That, that's the selling for me. <laughs> so it's actually better. Um, and, and but on, on top of that, you know, I do have three cats and I have two dogs. Yes, I was going to talk about that because it, I cannot help talking about that because, of course, I have, uh, well, I had six cats, but one of them passed away. So I have uh, now five cats. So anyone who has a lot of animals calls my attention, obviously. So I've known about, you know, some of the adventures that you have had. Uh, I think you you have this client uh, that works with a um, bit of a GPS system that you have in the collars of your animals. So I remember you talking about that and how you used it because I guess you almost lost one of the, your furry babies and then that device really helped you, right? So there's all sorts of funny stories also about traveling yeah. with those animals. Yeah, I mean, this, this isn't actually not one of our clients because we uh, this is actually a company that we just... We, okay, actually, let me take us... You guys back. support, maybe, <laughs> not necessarily clients. No, 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 clients. we had different stories oh, if I'm not together. But wait, before I go there, I forgot to mention because your question was, how do you move around and how do you decide how do you, where to go? Yeah forgot about that part um we mainly do climbing and snowboarding so that's the two main sports that we do and i'm trying to pick up kite surfing <clears throat> so basically we just go according to the season um meaning ah. that uh, and also like what i don't like to do i don't like you know i actually don't like the term digital nomad because people have weird labels and like sort of pressure peer pressure i don't like that i like to do whatever makes me feel good so what we do we typically move and we stay in the same place for several months. Mm. Um, like now we're in Greece for maybe, usually we're in Greece for, you know, five months or so at the end of the year and then the beginning of the new year. Mm. So uh, what's in Greece that takes you there? Is it uh, the some I sort mean, of a ma mountain that it's very specific or why why that? Because, you, I mean, I don't know what I'm saying, but maybe you can climb, I suppose, in many places, right? So why do you particularly enjoy that place for example and i know that you were in portugal uh some time ago maybe a year and a half ago or so and you were probably also climbing I'm not sure <laughs> i was just there now for for four months this summer as well oh. <laughs> i just came here so we moved from uh, portugal to spain we stopped in spain for two months or one mm -hmm. month and a half and then moved on to greece and i'm now going to move on to austria in a month um basically different climbing places different countries uh, have different climbing styles different mm -hmm. climbing rocks and quality and then each place has different seasons for example greece is very good for winter climbing because the weather is sort of good uh, you know it usually like now it's actually a cold spell but it doesn't usually go below like 10 degrees you know it's good to climb here you can actually ski in greece as well which is what we do a lot of the time we're actually going to go snowboarding tomorrow uh, ski touring in the just like on the hill up here <laughs> Um, because we don't want to drive all the way like to the resort, which is quite far. Um, but that's kind of the main reason. And so, and also like here, it's a, it's there is a lot of rock. It's a lot of climbing, really high quality, and it's a big community. So we have a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the same thing you know if and it's very good for van life as well although we do also have an apartment because we have all these pets and it's you can see my cats sleeping there <laughs> in my van <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, difficult. <laughs> it's difficult otherwise <clears throat> um and then normally uh, in my ideal world i would also do a ski season however right now you know you can do both at the same time uh greece is nice i've been snowboarding here in greece for the past maybe four years but i'm a little bit bored of the first world problems i know but it's a big hill it's not the alps so i'm a little bit bored of that and that's why i'm now gonna move um to austria for half of the season so the second part of the season i'm gonna be skiing then until i can until the conditions allow and then in summer i have no idea what we're gonna be doing uh we usually change it up a little bit uh last summer so we were in portugal mm. the summer before we were in uh bulgaria for four months <clears throat> Because it was, you know, you've got like lots of forests and it's just like a different country. It's just fun. So it kind of depends really <laughs> what we want to do. Um, and as far as the cats go, yes, because we travel so much, we use 
all sorts of things. Of course, you, you know, you have to ha get the microchipped. Um, mm -hmm, of course. Mm -hmm. the like everybody else, but then? <laughs> yeah, my cats have more passports than I do, which is funny. Some of them have dual citizenship. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know I have an American cat too. So. <laughs> exactly. And then, but they also, because when we go around, so they come hiking with me sometimes. So, um, and when we are, we pick places or, which are safe for them every time, mm -hmm. even with the van. Like now, if I let them out, it's because, you know, I am around and there is no cars here. Like this is a very, very safe. So I always make sure that whenever we go and we do let them out, first of all, we are aware of the environment um and we we check what they're doing and also it's safe but just in case they do have a gps collar mm -hmm. and my cats are pet fluencers <laughs> they're quite famous mm -hmm. they have i think twelve thousand followers on instagram wow. i stopped pushing their account maybe two years ago so i just it became a full-time job i just don't have time for that um but because of that we did we do get uh, some free stuff like we did we did get some free gps uh, trackers and mm. uh, from both the two main companies on the market in europe and some free subscriptions so that's how we we work with them sometimes <clears throat> but then you know we yeah we just pay it it's just like a normal device that mm -hmm. we use. Right, right. No, I just find the, 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 the device situation very interesting because I know a lot of people probably don't know that it exists or we can imagine that it exists, but we don't know where or where to look for and all of that stuff. <laughs> My cats stay at home, so I don't really have a device. They have the microchip, but I don't have a device. They're all home and now they've never been out. So I guess <laughs> they yeah, wouldn't be. <laughs> it's easier. Just keep them inside. It's just because I, we rescued all of these. They all, you know, they were all outdoor cats and we all, we like, found them outside one of them i found him in the alps the other ones and i kept i took him from uh, italy with me the other two we rescued as we're small in greece they're kind of it's very difficult to find them in a van so you know we yeah, also like leech walk them if it's not mm -hmm. safe so it's like yeah it's a bit i actually <laughs> at the time when <clears throat> i got in 2019 i officially moved away from the alps and into my partner's van at the, at the time and we were traveling full time and living in the van for two years <clears throat> the I started a blog <laughs> called The Nomad Cats mm -hmm. and I was like you know writing blog posts and I didn't really have a plan like I was like I'm just gonna document this whole thing and then I hired right. someone to write some blog content because I thought oh maybe I can get some ads and monetize this but then again it's just like I didn't know anything about writing blog content um I didn't I did I, kn I knew a little bit of course about SEO because of my translation work but I of course it was very far from you know knowing and I obviously didn't have time for that so but for a while I did get some you know ads and some monetization some payment through that so that was quite fun wow. <laughs> yeah I bet <laughs> yeah yeah, so that's this is wow, right? <laughs> the, all the things that you do, I suppose that's why people really find interesting in everything that you post on on well LinkedIn. What that's where I follow your work, but apparently you also have Instagram accounts and all of those things going on, or <laughs> because it's oh, hard yeah. to keep up with so many things, right? Profiles and yeah. stuff like that. So I would say, I guess we got the gist of it, but it's always hard <laughs> because if you, you're always moving, then we we probably have to catch up next year or something. <laughs> <laughs> to see where things are but uh sounds great i'm like oh my god and i know that a lot of people who are interested in action sports are now obviously you know working with you trying to work with you and all that stuff i guess my friend uh maria virginia uh, recently connected oh, yeah. with you and all that stuff. i guess i we had a conversation about that and then she ended up talking to you that was really funny so yeah i guess uh yeah <laughs> okay, nice yeah she's working with us yeah for uh one of our main accounts so she's been the yeah she's been like the portuguese translator i've I been think... watching now uh action sports um <laughs> content because you know she tells me about it and i'll go and check it out and of course in portugal you have uh surfing, i don't surfing. know anything i don't know anything about anything however uh, the thing is that r r right near where I live, there's the the biggest wave in I don't know <gasps> Portugal or Europe or whatever. Is that it's not too far away, so it's probably ah, kilometers. It. Yeah, so I guess it's it's kind of a relevant thing. We we'll, we have a lot of content about surfing and things like that, like the the national stuff. But I don't know anything about it, so this. It's not possible <laughs> for me to discuss the subject with you. But all of a sudden, I started watching things specifically because of <laughs> <laughs> all the subtitling and all of that part that is involved. So, I mean, you also, you have clients that ask you for all sorts of 
jobs, right? It's not only websites, things like that. You also have subtitling, things like that, right? So I guess it's it's, it's the also, subject, and then you do everything around and, it. So yeah, and then it's like a lot of different content types. You know, subtitling, app localization, user experience, product descriptions. It got it's like a lot, <clears throat> a lot of stuff. Um, and actually, for anyone who's listening these <laughs> to this, uh, we currently work with I think 450 translators. We're probably mm -hmm. gonna. We're currently heavily recruiting. We do mainly work for um, with mountain and winter sports, so that's kind of our focus. Mm -hmm. um, so I think at the end of the next couple of months, we probably we will have uh, maybe five to six hundred translators that we work with. Um, but if you are into action sports and you know you're like getting a light bulb in your head and like, oh my god, I can do this! I can actually <laughs> do translations for action sports for my sports I love. Mm -hmm. Our doors are open. Mm -hmm. so i'm gonna do like a shameless plug from our website now you can always go onto our website which is of course www.theactionsportstranslator.com mm -hmm. and you go onto the join the team basically it's like careers page and you will find some forms that you can just drop your details in um and so you know make sure that it's however an if you don't know anything about it <laughs> Right, like you always say in your posts, if you don't oh know anything God. about it, then don't apply. <laughs> yeah, I mean, today I posted a something for a copywriter. Copy, we're looking for copywriters for two mm -hmm. like big copywriting projects for mountain and winter sports. And in my post, I wrote because I'm not responsible for hiring. I just I have a big network, so I write the post on LinkedIn, and I would say, you know, please follow this link, drop your details there, and do not contact me privately. If, guess right. how many people contact me privately and didn't follow the link or send me an email like don't but do that's that that's <laughs> what happens to anyone who posts a job right if it, if you have nothing to do with it then that's well enough it's not your case obviously because you have something to do with it but even if you have nothing to do with it then people will like dm you to ask you questions and things like that well i love this is a new moment in the podcast where we have a a, a recruitment <laughs> session going on i love it i mean it's a brand new thing so yeah, this is this is going out like I said uh, very soon, so that you know it's Perfect. it's still current. So when you when you guys watch it, <laughs> when it comes out, it's still current. You can still apply yeah. you, and you can visit the website and all of that stuff. So I know you're super busy. I know you have rocks to climb <laughs> and everything <laughs> else, cats to feed, all sorts of things. So I'll let you go. Thank you so much for this. That was really fun. And I guess everybody, a lot of the people that I know follow you and love your content and know that you recruit people constantly. And you always say, if you're not into action sports, <laughs> don't do it. Uh, I mean, I couldn't do it because I'm a bit of a couch potato in that sense. I mean, I don't move. I don't do anything. So I'm not good for you. Therefore, <laughs> not training. <laughs> yeah, yes, I mean, for sure. I only do the talking. That's that's all I do. That's my muscle, <laughs> the muscle that I work. <laughs> okay. It works. It works. Now, it's been really awesome talking to you. I mean, um, yeah, it's like I said, anyone who's into action sports and professional later to fit to reach out and in the channel, as I said, <laughs> not to me, uh, not to me personally, uh, but by the channel. And yeah, and also, you know, if people want to follow us and see what we're up to. You can basically just type in the action sports translator into Google and we're everywhere. So Yeah, or we'll, <laughs> we'll also me. post a link. <laughs> anything. We we'll it will happen, right? For awesome. sure. Because <laughs> people want to join you, I suppose. Very nice. Awesome. Very nice to see you for the first time live. Like we we've spoken before, but we've exchanged messages, but I we have never talked really. So next time you come to Portugal, maybe I there's know. a chance that we can grab some coffee or I go meet you in the middle of nowhere, wherever you are <laughs> 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 to get to know your cats and all of that good stuff. Well, thank you so much. And well, we'll see you around. Always moving, but always around. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye.